Hi guys, it's the Power BI guy here and today we're going to go over star schema data modeling in Power BI. How do we actually create a data model in Power BI under a star schema? And we're going to go over the theory of what a fact and dimension table is as well because we're going to be creating our data model so we need to actually understand how we're going to be splitting our tables. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start this lesson. So before we actually create our data model, we need to understand what a fact and dimension table is and we need to understand what a star schema is. So a star schema essentially is where you have one central fact table and then you have many dimension tables surrounding it. And you might be wondering, so what is a fact table? Your central fact table based on your data consists of your values, the data that you want to do your calculations on. So for example, this could be your unit price, your costs. If you've got a HR data set, it might be salary, etc. So these are your fact table will have the values that you want to put in your visualizations, the actual values that you're going to create your measures based off of. Now, um, your dimension tables. So these are the surrounding tables. This is your descriptive data, your different entities, your different uh, data points when it comes to descriptive information. So this could be um, your product names. Another table could be regional information, etc. So let's actually take a look at an example about what I mean by this. So in Power Query, I've pulled up a data set. Um, if we take a look, your sales columns, that will be your, your sales quantity profit, that will go into your fact table, for example, and then information such as uh, over here we have uh, regional information, United States, your city, etc. That, that will go into a dimension table, your regional information. Then you might have another dimension table that has your customer information. So you might have their customer name and uh, their segment. And then you might have another table, which is a shipping mold table that has your shipping methods. And that will be another dimension table. So that's how we need to understand fact and dimension tables. This is how we're going to split our data. So we need to understand that a star schema model consists of one central fact table with your values. And then surrounding that, we have dimension tables that consist of descriptive information. So let's go ahead and start building our model within Power Query. Now, the first thing that I recommend that you do is conceptualize what your fact and dimension tables are and just have a think about that. So if I take a look at my data set, I can see that I have transactional information here. These are values, sales, quantity, profit, etc. So that is going to go into my fact table. And then over here, I have a descriptive information such as pulse code, uh, product names. These are going to be different tables, uh, different dimensions, dimension tables. So the first one that I'm immediately going to work with is let's create a customer dimension table. So for example, over here, we have customer name and segment that they belong to. So what I need to do is if I duplicate this original table, let's call this dim customers, dim customer. And what I'm going to do actually dim customers, sorry, that's going to bug me, dim customers. And then what I'm going to do is select the two columns that I want to keep in my dimension table. So this is customer information. We're creating this as one table. I'm going to right click, then remove other columns. Now, immediately we now have two columns that are in our dimension customers. But the issue that we have is the customer, the customer name should be unique because in this instance of the data set, the customer should, one customer can only have one customer ID. So what we need to do is if we click customer name and then click remove duplicates this will now give us a unique customer uh, customer key a customer column because one individual can only appear once within this table and now what I need to do is create a key for this table so I'm going to go to add column add index column and then if I click from one this is now giving me a customer ID key so if I call this customer ID, we now have our dimension table. Now, what we need to do is go back to the original table. So this is going to be eventually be our, our fact table. What we need to do is click home, merge queries. And what we're going to do is merge the ID column. So for now, the customer name and the customer name in the original column, because there is no customer ID column in our original table for yet. But so we can select customer name and then customer name in the new column and then click OK. And what I'm going to do is remove the two columns in our original table because we don't need that. Remove. And now if I expand the table that we just joined, we can bring in the customer ID. And now if I call this the same as my uh, the same column header I gave in dim customers, so I'm going to call this customer ID. I'm sure. Yep, customer ID, 
and then the name here is customer ID once again. We now have a relationship between the two tables. So let's actually demonstrate what I mean by this. And we've created our first dimension table. So let me load that into our model. Right, if I remove this, if we take a look at the two tables that we just pulled in, we can see there's a one to many relationship because we created, we removed the duplicate. So we made this unique with many orders because one customer can have many orders. And if we bring that into a table, for example, we can look at the customer name and then look at uh, quantity and we can see how many orders they made. But we're not done yet. We need to carry, we've got a few more steps. So what we need to do is we go back to transform data we have now created our orders table, uh, our dimension customers table. Now the next set of information we're going to create and our next dimension table is our regional information. So what I'm going to do once again is duplicate this table, but what I'm going to do now, we need to remove the steps because we don't need to merge, the, we don't need these steps to be applied every time we load this table because we don't need the ID column. So what we're going to do is go to the remove columns and then delete until end. And now we have our original table. Those were unnecessary steps because we're going to remove them anyway. So what we're going to do now is select our ship, our shipping, uh, not our shipping information. We're going to select our regional information now. Go to region, to country, to region. I'm going to do the same thing, remove other columns. And now if we take a look, we have our dimension table. But what we need to do, let's call this dim region. What we need to do is now make this table unique. This is not going to work on the United States uh, column because if we remove duplicates here, this won't make sense because United States can have many cities and one city can have many states. But can one postcode have many anything? No. So what we need to do is remove that step. And if, for example, if I just, for, for demonstration, I can, if I remove the duplicates here, we're going to lose some states because let's use, let's actually visualize this. If we look at, for example, Apple, uh, if we look at, for example, let's see if we can get an example here. I just want to show you an example with one state. So if we look at Belleville, no, we need a city that can have multiple states. Um, yeah, if we look at Bloomington, one city can have multiple states. It has Indiana and Illinois. So if I've removed the duplicates here, we're only going to, we're going to have only have one state. So that doesn't make sense. What we need to do is look at the hierarchy and postal code. There can't be more than one postal code in a unique key because one postal code refers to all three of these columns. So what I'm going to do is remove duplicates on this. So make sure you use your logic when it, when it comes to data modeling in a sense with what columns you're removing the duplicates for. And now we have a unique table. Once again, if I add an index column for this from one, we now have a, so I'm gonna call this region ID. We now have a, a key for this table. And if we go back to orders once again, I'm going to go to home, merge queries, and then if I bring that dim region table in, I'm going to select the postal code because that's the table that we remove the duplicates for. Um, we have a match, bring that in. As we can see that table's there now. And what I'm going to do is remove all our regional information. So what I'm going to do is if I select these columns up to here, our regional information, remove columns, and now if I bring in the region ID, we have now created a relationship between those tables. And I need to call this region ID. Make sure your column headers are the same with your keys so that they, the relationships automatically detect. And now we have created our second dimension table. Now let's take a look. We have product information. So we have product information over here, for example, category, subcategory, etc. So what I'm going to do is duplicate, remove from the original columns because we want the original table. So Power Query doesn't do these steps every time we load this table. We need to delete until end. And I am going to select the columns we want to keep. So in this instance, for this dimension table, let's call this dim products. For this dimension table, I am going to remove, I'm going to keep uh, the category, subcategory, product name. 
So these are the columns that we need to keep. I'm going to remove the other columns. Remove the other columns. And once again, we need to use some logic here when it comes to this table. Our category furniture can have many subcategories. As we can see, the furniture can have bookcases, chairs, tables, etc. So we can't remove the duplicates there. Can a subcategory have multiple products? Yes, it can. So for example, if we look at accessories, accessories can have multiple products. But can one product, can there be a duplicate of the product name? No, no it can't. They can't be. So if we take a look here, can, can one product be called Bush Somerset Collection Bookcase? Yes, only once though. There might be multiple orders, hence why we have duplicates, but that is one product. So if we remove duplicates, we now have a unique table once again, a unique column, um, and this is correct when we remove our duplicates. If I add column, index column from one, we now have a unique key to join. So I'm gonna call this product ID product ID let's go back to our original table once again let's remove uh, let's remove that information now we need to merge first let's merge queries on the product name our dimension products table I'm going to select the product columns we should have an exact match okay and now I'm going to remove this information because we don't need that in this table I'm going to remove columns and now we need to expand the ID. So product ID because we need to create that relationship. And then let's call this the same column header product ID. And now as you can see our table is getting smaller but we have all that data now broken up into a star schema model and then dimension tables. So once again even ship mode that is a separate that that is a, that is descriptive that is not a fact so what we need to do is once again if i duplicate this table if i duplicate this table i'm going to call this dimension shipping because that's a separate data point i'm going to remove everything after the original columns so remove so we get our original data set once again shipping mode and what i'm going to do actually if i go to transform convert to list to table or we can just do remove duplicates here to table I'm going to call this shipping method I'm going to call this shipping method and then add column index column so we want to create that key because there's only four shipping modes I'm going to call this uh, sh shipping ID if we go back to our original table ship mode I'm going to merge the queries or so home merge queries dimension shippings I'm going to select the shipping mode two columns a unique key that we created and the ship mode there should be an exact match once again and then I'm going to remove this column expand this shipping ID And ideally, I should be, I could do this in M to reduce the applied steps, but um, this is more for, out of an understanding when you're starting off. So I'm going to go to call this shipping ID. And as you can see now, we have reduced this table completely down. We have created a fact table and we have created now four dimension tables. So if I now, if we take a look, actually, we have order dates and ship dates. Now, every single one of these records is unique in a sense where it represents a different order. So if I actually add a column to this table and call this from one, uh, from one, so we create an index key, I'm going to call this orders ID. And if we close this now, we have a perfect star schema, uh, which has been set up correctly, the column headers is unique and it's very efficient and that is essentially how you create a star schema within the power query and let's actually see the relationships once this is all loaded in and there's a few multiple ways you can do this via referencing there's referencing in power query this is the one of the easier ways to do it so if i actually pull that in and as we can see naturally we have now created a branch we've i don't like the place there 
and we what we need to do now is create a custom date table uh, and link that to our orders table.